Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theo Joe Tech, and in this video I wanted to go over the difference between different types of hard drives. You got desktop, regular hard drives, NAS drives, and then enterprise grade hard drives. So what are the differences? What are the different applications? That's what I'm gonna go over so you guys can learn some stuff, so stick around. So in addition to regular desktop hard drives that you are familiar with, there are also NAS and enterprise drives and they range in price. The lowest would be regular desktop and the highest would be enterprise. But despite the price, they are different for different purposes. So you might not necessarily want to go out and buy a more expensive drive for your desktop if you're not going to be using it in certain situations. So I'm going to go over all that. So for desktop hard drives, these are the cheapest, the most common. These are designed for computers that are pretty much everyday use for a regular person where you wake up in the morning, you turn on the computer, and then it goes off again at night. It's basically made for a typical work week that assumes the drive is gonna be on for eight hours a day, five days a week. Not like the more expensive drives, which would assume 24 hours a day, seven days a week, such as if it's gonna be in a server. Also for desktop drives, they're assuming that the drive is pretty much gonna be by itself or maybe with one other drive, as opposed to being stacked with a bunch of different drives in a server or an array or something like that. So a lot of regular hard drives don't have vibration tolerance built in. They don't have any extra features for that. And also because they're assumed to be by themselves when an error occurs, an unrecoverable error, the drive spends a lot more time trying to recover that error than a enterprise or NAS drive would because with an NAS or enterprise drive, it's assumed that it's going to be in RAID so it can get more unrecoverable errors fixed by backup. But if it's just a regular desktop drive that's the only one in the computer, there's no data to pull backup from. So if an error occurs, then it's going to spend a lot of time trying to get that several, maybe even a minute or so. That doesn't happen with the other drives. Desktop drives are also lower performance typically because a consumer is probably not gonna be using the full bandwidth of the drive all the time, maybe sometimes, but it's not designed to handle that kind of stuff all the time because usually someone, a vast majority of people are just going to you know, access small files, run a program here and there. They're not gonna be copying huge amounts of data and writing huge amounts of data constantly. Desktop drives also consume less power and usually produce less noise, so they're really optimized for the average person. Next, let's move on to NAS drives, which are for network attached storage arrays of some sort. Now, it's important to understand that NAS drives aren't really a real term. They're kind of a marketing term where a hard drive manufacturer adds on some features and adds a little bit of improvement to a typical desktop drive. That's not always the case, but you wanna be careful when looking at an NAS drive because a lot of the times that's not a strict definition. So you wanna look at the specs. NAS drives typically have features added that assume that the drive is gonna be put into a RAID array with several other drives, such as vibration tolerance. You're gonna have a little bit of features to buffer some of that vibration because when you have several drives together, that adds vibration and can cause some problems. So they add in stuff like dual plane, a vibration balance to kind of mitigate that. Also, when an NAS drive comes across an unrecoverable error, it spends a lot less time trying to repair it. That's because in a RAID environment, you're going to usually have parity to back up all the data. So instead of trying to spend a lot of time recovering that data, it just takes it from backup. And the reason you don't want to spend a lot of time recovering that data is because when you do that, the drive locks up, isn't really accessible, so the RAID controller thinks the drive is gone. And if the drive is inaccessible or locked up while it's trying to repair for too long, then the RAID controller th thinks the drive just died and it starts to rebuild the entire drive and you don't want that. So instead, the NAS drive just spends a little bit of time trying to repair it. If it can't, it sends a signal to the RAID controller to just rebuild it so you don't have that drive drop out of the whole array and cause issues with trying to rebuild everything. And that's probably one of the reasons you don't wanna just plop an NAS drive into a regular desktop because if there's no backup RAID data and you come across an error, then there's no data to pull from and it doesn't spend as much time as it should trying to repair it, so you're kinda of stuck. 
NAS drives should theoretically be more reliable than a regular hard drive, but again, you're gonna wanna check the specs to make sure because if you get a really cheap NAS, it might be no good. So one of the things you can actually look at is the MTBF, the mean time between failure. That's a pretty good measurement of how long you can expect the drive to last on average. That doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to last that long. That means that on average, that's how long it takes one of those drives to fail. It could fail a lot sooner, could last a lot longer, but that just gives you an average of the probability of how long it's gonna last. So say you have a MTBF of a million hours, that drive in general will last longer than a drive with an MTBF of 500,000 hours, but that's just an average, so it's not a guarantee. Another spec you can look at is the URE unrecoverable error rate, and this is the rating of how many bits between the average unrecoverable error. Now on a regular desktop drive, this is usually every 10 to the 14th bits, which is 100 trillion bits or about 12 terabytes. But on a NAS or enterprise drive, you might see 10 to the 15th, which is 10 times less likely to get an unrecoverable error. So if you go to get an NAS drive, make sure you get something with at least 10 to the 15th, not 10 to the 14th, so you can at least have a better chance at avoiding unrecoverable errors, which are really important for rebuilding a failed drive in a RAID environment. So NAS drives are typically gonna be more expensive than a desktop drive, but they are good for NAS environments. So if you have one to five drives that are gonna be accessed by network attached storage and they're gonna have to be accessible all the time, then yeah, you probably wanna go with an NAS. And as I said, if you're getting it for just a regular desktop, you probably don't wanna get an NAS drive because you're gonna be paying for a lot of features that you don't necessarily need. And as I mentioned, if you do come across an unrecoverable error, you might not be able to fix it. Although I assume you'd be able to go into the firmware settings and allow it to spend more time on it, but you might not wanna deal with that. I'd say if you want a really good reliable desktop drive, just look for one with a really high mean time between failure and a good unrecoverable error rate. I'm sure they exist where you get good specs, but you don't have to pay for the NAS features. Finally, let's talk about enterprise drives. These are the most expensive and are designed for enterprise systems with lots of drives. They're all stacked together in huge systems. So they have obviously a lot of vibration, balancing built in to tolerate that. And you're also going to get much more reliability, such as higher mean time between failure rates, better URE rates. And like NAS drives, you're gonna have shorter recovery times. So the drives are still operable and don't drop out of the array and you just pull errors from backup to fix them. Enterprise drives are going to have higher quality parts than NAS and desktop drives. So they're gonna be more reliable in general, theoretically. So for example, they're gonna have dual mounted spindles. You know how in a regular hard drive, the spindle for the drive is only mounted on the bottom, but in an enterprise drive, you usually see it mounted on the top and bottom through the middle, so that kind of adds more stability. These drives have 24 seven heavy usage in mind, so it's understandable that you're gonna need those higher quality parts. So they also have much higher mean time between failure ratings, as well as better URE ratings, whereas a regular desktop drive might have a rating of 10 to the 14th, the enterprise drive usually has somewhere around 10 to the 16th for UREs, so you're gonna come across an unrecoverable error, theoretically, 100 times less often. Another common feature of enterprise drives are SAS interfaces as opposed to SATA. This connector is a bit different in that it's full duplex. SATA is half duplex, which means it can only send information one way at a time, but SAS can send it two ways at a time. It's full duplex. And SAS also allows for higher transfer rates and longer cables, which is good for server environments where you have to run cables all over the place. Enterprise drives are also going to have end-to-end -end error correction. So in several steps of copying a file, you're gonna have error checks, whereas on an NAS drive or desktop, you're probably gonna only get error checks every once in a while when it goes through and checks them, whereas it's a lot more often on an enterprise drive. So as you can imagine, enterprise drives really have reliability in mind, and they also typically have a much longer warranty than an NAS or desktop drive. 
So those are the main differences. Basically, if you have a regular desktop and you want a good hard drive, just look at the specs, specifically at the URE and MTBF, and that can probably give you a good idea of how good the drive is. And if you're going for a network attached storage or a RAID server or something like that, you probably want to go with Enterprise if you can afford it because NAS is basically like a poor man's Enterprise drive. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and if you want to talk more about this, we can talk in the comments section below. I'll be looking down there and talking with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so I know you guys liked it and other people know it's a good video as well. If you want to keep watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side you might like. You can just click them or look in the description for the same link if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I try to make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. You guys can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, all those sites, and I look forward to hearing from you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.